हेलो एवरीवन आई डॉक्टर चारू चड्डा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट बनारसीदास चांदीवाला इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ बीसीआईपी आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू द एलिमिनाइ टॉक सीरीज वी आर हेयर टू डिस्कस जर्नी टू बिकम अ लाइसेंस्ड फिजिकल थेरेपिस्ट इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स टुडे विद अस वी हैव रिनाउ डॉक्टर तानिया शिवा लेट्स ग्रीट आवर एलिमिनाइ टुडे थैंक यू डॉक्टर तानिया फॉर जॉइनिंग अस आवर गेस्ट डॉक्टर Our guest, Dr. Tanya Shiva, is pursuing Doctor of Physical Therapy program for from Arcadia University in Penn State, U.S. She is an experienced physical therapist from reputed hospitals such as Ames and Women's in India and different work settings in Canada. She is an instructor for medical terminology and human physiology courses at Grant McEwan. University in Canada. She has publications in neurological and orthopedic fields. I appreciate her on behalf of BCIT the admir admirable work of her done in the field of physical therapy. Now I would like Dr. Tanya to take over the session and enlighten us with journey to become a licensed physical therapist in United States. Dr. Tanya, please continue. Thank you so much, Charu, ma'am, and everyone. Um, it's a great opportunity to be here and uh, talking to all of you about my journey to become a licensed physical therapist in U.S. And I'm hoping this will help all the students at BCIP, whoever is listening to the webinar today. Uh, so, ma'am, can I start? So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'll be talking about various aspects, you know, how, what are the different steps, how you have to proceed uh, towards uh, getting successful in being licensed physical therapist in US. So welcome to all of you. If you have any questions, please just uh, type in the chat box or uh, let me know and I will answer it. Okay, next. Can you go on the next slide, please? So, yeah, um, my pro journey Charu has already talked about just for educational purposes and it's my own personal of presenting any organization or promoting any agency here so whatever I'm telling you is the recent up-to-date resource but you can always go back to the main links that I've provided yeah the next slide uh, the next one Okay, so this slide is highlighting the basic steps you all need to be a PT in US. So as you can see on the very top, the red box, that shows credential evaluation completion. What that means is whatever credits you have completed in your bachelor's of physiotherapy degree in India or a master's degree in India or anywhere else, those credits will be evaluated by an agency in US. They need to make sure whatever you have studied is satisfying the minimum requirements to be a licensed physical therapist in US. And they compare it to their American standards. So if there is an American physical therapy graduate, there are certain uh, criteria to graduate from American program. So the agencies will look at that criteria and compare your education to the American on PWS. Okay, so that's the first step, credential evaluation completion. After that, the second box that you can see, the green colored box, it shows state requirements. Now, state requirements is something different than actual credential evaluation. US is a very big country. <laughs> like, you know that there are different states in US. So every state has their own specific requirement to qualify to work in that state and this is totally different than the first step so you need to also complete the state requirements to be able to practice here once you complete the state requirements the state will issue you a letter which says that you are eligible for the an exam which exam i'm talking about the npte the board exam national physical therapy examination so that's the last box you can see in purple. You can appear for the NPT and then once you pass, you can register 
to get the license in the state for which you have applied. So in nutshell, these are the three major steps you need to complete. Step one, step two, step three, okay? Okay, you can go on the next slide now. Before going ahead with the whole process, it's very important to understand what are the different organizations that you have to deal with. So as you can see on this slide, there are three major organizations. First is FSBPT, which stands for Federations of State Board of Physical Therapy. That's the main organization in US that develops, maintains, and administer the physical therapy exam. So this is the organization you will be dealing with when you are registering for the exam. And also, like there are different uh, ways how you can check about your uh, about whether you qualify or how much credits you have. I'll, I'll show you in the upcoming slides, okay? The next uh, organization is FCCPT. That's called the Foreign Credentialing Commission on Physical Therapy. So as you can see from the name, Commission to evaluate physical therapy, right? It's, it's an organization that evaluates your foreign degree in physical therapy and even physical therapy assistant programs. This organization also issue healthcare worker certificates to work in United States. So immigration related work also, this organization help for. So you will be dealing with this too. The last but not the least is your states. So as I earlier mentioned, US is a big country with different states and every state has a specific licensing requirement. So again, you have to know which state you're applying to. All right. Uh, any questions so far or we can go to the next slide. Okay, so I just mentioned to you about states. You can see in this slide, this is the US map and how vast it is. Just look at the uh, number of states that are in this uh, picture. So you can decide which state you want to work in prior to uh, going through all the processes. Be why I'm saying that is because it's gonna make process easier for you. Because if you know which state you are applying for, it's going to help you to know what are the requirements for that state and you can just focus on that. Because trust me, every state is very different. Some people will, some states will have more requirements, some will have less requirements, okay? An example would be some states uh, may have a TOEFL, you know, English language testing to test your English speaking ability. Whereas other states will be like, okay, we don't need TOEFL, you know, something like that. So it would vary. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So the most important thing, as I said, is selecting the state. So um, you have to be really organized. Once you select like what state you intend to work in, there, uh, like you'll be like, okay, wh wh what are the reasons that I need to select this particular state? Like, are, are there any criteria? There's no criteria, it all depends on you as a person. So your state selection can be based on your spouse work location. So if you're married and your husband is already working here and they have already a job which is well established in a state, then obviously you're gonna go with that state, right? Because you want to live with your husband. So again, that depends. Sometimes students come here uh, on a study permit in US. So wherever your university is located, it's easier for you to, you know, because you're already familiar with the area. So you're gonna complete credit as a PT and get licensed for Texas because it's relatively warm. But some people who like cold or doesn't like too much warm weather, they would prefer Michigan where I'm currently in, okay? And you can look at specific state board websites and it will, uh, it will talk about, you know, what are the state specific requirements? And that will really uh, help you in uh, 
understanding details about every state what they want like the different set of forms that you need to fill and you need to do like n number of tasks written on their um, page okay you can go on the next slide please let me know if i'm too fast uh, i can slow down so am i okay Can yeah, anyone just message? Okay, okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, then you can see this list. This list that I provided here is for credential evaluation. So there are certain agencies that will evaluate your BPT degree, the Bachelor's of Physical Therapy, and your Master's of Physiotherapy. These are FCCPT, which is Foreign Credentialing Commission on Physical Therapy. That's the most important uh, organization you will be dealing with, trust me, for a very long time. I'm still dealing with them. And then you have ICD, which is International Consultants of Delaware. This is, again, an organization that helps for your credential evaluation. Also, we have IERF, International Education Research Foundation. This, all, this organization also helps. Now you will be wondering, like, how do you decide which organization to go for? So for that answer, I would say, once selected tend to work in you will go to the state website and look at their requirements i as i said every state has a specific specifically mentioned they want fccpt or they want ice and you know do any you need to look at the state specific requirements and then go for the uh, organization in my case in my case i went for fccpt uh, because I have applied for New York license and uh, FCCPT does all that work uh, when I was uh, completing my paperwork. And currently I am also working for Michigan. So my all paperwork is being done by FCCPT as well. All right. So yeah, we can go to the next slide. Okay. Now, this is really interesting. I wish I had known this before when I was, uh, you know, uh, arranging for all my paperwork, but uh, it's good that I'm bringing up this point now for you, all of you. There's one exception, New York State. This state conducts its own evaluation. So FCCPT does not conduct evaluation for New York. What, what, what they do is FCCPT collects the documents on behalf of New York. CPT will verify the documents to check the authenticity. As you know, there are so many countries and uh, different universities, and they want to make sure that you really did, you know, your whole education. Like, it's all authentic. Uh, there is no fraud involved. Like, it's all um, virtuous, I, I can say. So they, they're going to make sure all of your BPT degrees, your transcript, everything is legit. Once they complete the um, authentication process, all your paperwork will be forwarded uh, to New York State. And the New York State will then start its own evaluation. Okay. So this is a very important point because a lot of people don't know that. Even people who are in US, a lot of them even don't know that. So now, if any one of you is planning for higher uh, education or coming here, you know this now. Okay, you can go ahead. Yes, another important concept here. Uh, how do they evaluate? Like what is, what is the basis of the evaluation, right? So they use coursework tool. Uh, that's the standardized tool that is used in US uh, to evaluate our coursework deficiencies, okay? And coursework deficiencies based on the year of your graduation. So for example, uh, right now at the present moment, US, uh, to work in US as an immigrant, like someone coming from a different country, you need a coursework tool six, and it can change any time. So there are different names to give to coursework tool. We have coursework tool five, four, six, all these names. The latest is number six. So the latest means more courses, more credit requirements, like everything goes up. You know, the, the bar to uh, actually work in United States, they keep raising it up. So six is like, you need a lot of credits and you need a lot of courses to fulfill that. But if it's coursework tool five or four, it's comparatively lesser. 
Okay, so I have written here something to share with you. So people who have graduated before 30th June 2009, so way before 2009, if somebody completed their education, they will be eligible for coursework tool four because they, they got graduated very long time. Okay, then someone who graduated between June 2009 to December 31st, 2016, Till 2016 graduation, there will be it will be a coursework tool five. So for me, I graduated in March 2012. So my coursework tool is coursework tool five. Okay. Which is again, um, okay, uh, my slides are I think gone. Can you see that or this is a second? Okay. Ma'am, you uh, now you will be able to share your screen. Please check once. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Uh, can all of you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Okay, yeah, now, now it's perfect. Uh, okay, so FCCPT, I have specifically picked that organization because uh, that is the organization you'll be dealing with majority of your time. Uh, and a lot of states accept FCCPT's evaluation, okay? So the list you can see on this slide is talking about different services available with FCCPT. These are called primary service type, the main services. So they have type one review, which is a service for immigration purpose, which means you want to work in US. That's why you need type one review. Type one for licensure. Again, some states in US, for example, um, you can say is California. California state requires type one licensure to work in US. So if you are applying for California and you are using FCCPT, you need to select type one for licensure service. The one that I've highlighted is ECR, very common service uh, used and a lot of states uh, require that. It's called Educational Credentials Review. I did that for myself for Michigan. And currently I, I am almost done with my deficiencies. Yesterday also I had an exam. So I had to give that exam and I passed that exam and that's how I got those credits and I will be sending my transcripts for that too. The next is physical therapy assistant educational credential review and New York credential verification, which I already told you uh, earlier, like verification means they're just going to check, check the authenticity of the documents. Okay. Now let's talk in detail about the educational credentials review. So in this slide, you can, you can see the basic requirements, like what exactly FCCP PT needs from you. So first step, you're going to select the service. It's called ECR, Educational Credential Evaluation. You're gonna submit the form and online payment on their website. I will show you where. Then you need documents from your college in India. So you need to contact college and uh, request all the official document submission. So trust me, you need to have a really good relationship with your college to be able to you know, get all these things done. So college is your best friend forever. <laughs> until you become licensed in US. You will, you will keep like always keep on, you know, getting requests to get documents. So make college your best friend. And then finally, uh, after that is your evaluation report. So uh, you will receive an evaluation report from FCCPT and they will tell you, okay, we evaluated your report. This is the credits you are lacking or this is the deficiency you have. What you will do then, you're like, oh my God, I, you know, I did all this BPT and now they are giving me a list of courses and you're like, oh, I'm going to, you know, study again. But yeah, you have to, because as an immigrant, life is not easy. You can't just go and settle in any country. You need to follow rules. So it's part of their rules. So you need to start working on your deficiencies right away. Once you get your report, that's what I did. Uh, now I'll show you what are deficiencies, like how do you would define deficiencies? Uh, okay, Bef yeah, it's here. But before that, yes, requirements. So uh, FCCPT needs uh, an online application form 
and a relate and a fee for that and now it's really very high earlier it used to be little low but now since there are a lot of people are coming to us to uh, as a practice to practice as a physio their price is going up uh, it's really competitive and very bad actually it's, it shouldn't happen then official transcripts official transcripts you can get either from ip university directly from the registrar office uh, at least when i was in india i i think i paid uh, 5000 rupees in 2012 and i got 25 transcripts uh, for that official all sealed and everything so i got that i gave some to my mother in india so she, whenever she you know i need my transcript she would you know go to the college and get the other documents and get it sent so make sure that if you are planning to come abroad you need to get official transcripts so give some to your family bring some with you and be in touch with your college if you don't have official transcript it's fine what you can do is uh, have a photocopy of your uh, original transcript and ask uh, the college director uh, or the official you know currently uh, working you can ask them to sign date attest it so it will be considered official even the photocopy if they sign and attest and approve it it will be official okay you need certificates of clinical experience and hours so this means your internship your internship completion certificate from the hospital you worked and one i think you will get from banarsidas chandiwala that certificate too and the hours is curriculum hours so uh, there is a uh, there is a document called curriculum hours that highlights all your first year second year credits and hours that you work and at the bottom they have internship hours that is very important so you get it from college once you complete your whole degree then detailed course description so that you know but arsidas chandiwala like we have we are affiliated to ip university so ip has a detailed uh, syllabus which i am sure must be updated by now so that needs to be sent to and everything needs to be attested even if one thing is not attested which means no sign no date no signature no stamp document is rejected they they would want you to repeat the whole process it's it's not it's a crazy but yeah they do that even though everything is in the same packet they will not approve it they reject it uh, you would also need a copy of your D, uh, dp uh, pt diploma by diploma i meant uh, is uh, your degree so in us they 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 talk degree uh, instead of degree they use words like diploma so don't get confused if they say diploma or degree do you know they're talking about your bpt okay or your mpt now all these documents must be sent from your issuing institution which is banarsidas chandiwala so that's your best bet okay i have a web link i think i have opened it here i would like to show you um okay so this is the website fccpt's website that you uh, need to look for uh, once you go there there is something called on the left side primary services now if you click that you're going to get all these services i just talked about and once you decide which state you are going for to work in or where you want to settle you can choose the specific uh, requirement where you want to do okay so for ecr i clicked ecr right here and you go there so it it has everything like what does ecr do and uh, what should you do to apply for ecr submitting documents like it has everything in there foreign language documents which means toefl so even your fccpt requires toefl for your ecr mine got waived because i have a master's degree from canada so they did not ask me for toefl okay so this is the website i wanted to share with you now let's go here deficiencies so coursework deficiencies deficiencies can be of two types by two types i mean it could be a content deficiency content means specific areas are not present in the syllabus such as a deficiency in pain a deficiency in administration or a defi deficiency in delegation as indian physical therapist who studied in india these are the deficiencies you will definitely get delegation administration and ethics and law because these are not covered in our bpt curriculum but i was so surprised that i got a deficiency in pain 
I got a deficiency in ergonomics, even histology. So I was really surprised. I even contacted the organization and I told them, you know, I have studied all of this in my bachelor's. Like your bachelor's cannot be possible without studying histology. I covered in my physiology, human physiology, I covered it. They did not agree with me. Again, it's their system and you need to go by their system, right? So yeah. Uh, and then we have credit deficiencies. So every course has a specific number of credits assigned to it. And uh, the credit can be a two credit course, a three credit, you know, or a one credit course. All of these credits add up at the end. So what FCCPT is looking at is really, they have a certain number of credits that you need to fulfill the criteria according to your coursework too. So once you met these, that criteria of credits, you satisfy their requirements. But that's not the only end. Even apart from credit, you need to fulfill the course deficiency. So if somebody has to complete like 150 credits, for example, you, you completed all the credits from courses but still you have a deficiency in pain management or you have a deficiency in diagnosis, prognosis, you know, things like that. Your evaluation report will still say deficiency, deficiency and it's not fulfilled. So you need to complete content deficiency as well as credit, both, okay? Now, this is really interesting. I, I found this tool recently and I think this will be really helpful how to determine that you are eligible for the exam and what is the process like for anyone who is starting fresh right out of school and you know you have an american dream to fulfill this is the page you need to go in it's called fccp uh, fsbpt exam eligibility so you can see on this uh, page you can enter your information which is your school name so banarsi das chandiwala institute of physiotherapy i've given that an example as an example because that was my school in india and state you want to work in. So I have entered Michigan here. So what you're gonna do is, I'll show you how this thing works. So this, this link that you have here, you're just gonna copy it. I, I mean, I'm gonna copy it to show you and I'll place it here, let's go here. So here uh, I go and I'll type uh, Banarsi, Banarsi, yeah, see, it's already in the system. They know us which is good. Our college is really famous. See, we're already there in the system. Okay, so BCIP is there. Now I want to practice in Michigan, for example. I will just press, press this go. What happens here is you get the whole sequence, like what you want to do exactly. And this is really good that they have started it. So basically you need to first create an F FSBPT account in order to register for the exam. So this is the process I'm telling you for exam registration and uh, meeting the FC FSBPT criteria. You need to uh, create an account, then credential evaluation, which we know we just talked about, what is credential evaluation, you need to complete that. Pass TOEFL exam, okay? So New York State uh, waves TOEFL off, like and up till the point I gave the exam, they wave TOEFL off. Uh, so that is one state that you can look into uh, because it has relatively uh, lesser requirements as compared to other states. So once you pass the TOEFL, you need to register for exam, okay? And once you register for the exam, you need to get the uh, jurisdiction eligibility. What is jurisdiction eligibility? Jurisdiction means the state that you intend to practice as a PT. So in my case, it's Michigan. So you need to go to the Michigan board website and there is a list of requirements. Uh, you need to fulfill that. So you are not only fulfilling FSBPT requirement, you're also fulfilling Michigan state requirement, both of them. And once all of these get done, then you appear for the NPTE, okay? But for me, I, what I did is I went through New York. In between, somehow I came to know about New York and I had my Michigan application open, but I realized by the time I will, you know, prepare my deficiencies for Michigan, it will be already like one and a half, two years. And I didn't want to wait. So instead I opened up another application with New York board separate from Michigan. And because their requirements were less, I got my eligibility for exam faster and I appeared for my license exam and I passed it in the first attempt. So 
I got my license for New York. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to transfer my New York license to Michigan, but that can just not happen, you know, transferring the license and it's done. No, I'm fulfilling right now my Michigan uh, credit deficiencies and also content deficiencies. So that is what is meant by jurisdiction eligibility, okay? Uh, then you have federation review testing accommodation. This is for people who have uh, difficulty, you know, some kind of difficulty or impairments like visual impairments or intellectual impairments. So FSBPT can uh, give you extra time or um, make the environment more comfortable and friendly for uh, those individuals to be able to uh, appear and excel in the exam. So the impairments will not have any, uh, I mean, it will affect the person, I'm sure, but the FSBPT will try their best to arrange accommodation services for those individuals. But you need to request this in advance and doctor's notes and another set of paperwork follow for that. Then we have ATT, uh, that's called authorized letter. Uh, what that means is, as an immigrant in US, uh, we will need to apply for an authorization to test, like an authorization from FSBPT to test for the exam. We, they give us a number. That number is very important. We need to use that to register for the exam. But if I am not an Indian or an immigrant, I'm an American citizen, for example, I would not need ATT. Like this is only for people who are, you know, from a different country here and who are not working currently or not on working status, you need this one for. Then once you have the ATT, you can schedule and take the exam and then scores will be reported, jurisdiction will give you license and you will pass this exam, okay? So this is the sequence. Uh, you can refer to this website. I've provided the link in the uh, slides. Uh, it's right here, okay? Um, so yeah, this was the first thing. Then the second, how you open the account, complete ECR, pass, TOEFL, register. Then again, all these things we just talked about, all right? Now, NPT preparation, like very, very, uh, <laughs> I think very, very, um, curious topic among students. Uh, so you need basic textbooks, the ones that, you know, God, our godfather that we've been studying uh, since we were in a BPT first year. <laughs> your Maggie orthopedic physical assessment, like you need that book. It's, your, it's the best you need it for your ortho. Colby Kisner, you need that, the latest edition. Then O'Sullivan for neuro rehab, you need that. Like the, you need all these, trust me. Keep all your books with you. NPT therapy ed. So this is the book that you can order online and it will be delivered to your uh, place. I'm sure they are also ordering to like they are accepting orders from India too. So they can ship it from US to uh, India. Very good book. Like it's like a review book uh, that have mock exams. So you can uh, review the content and uh, go for the mock exam. You know where you stand. Like what are your scores? And you can use that as a tool to improve where you need to work on. There's another book called uh, Dutton for orthopedics. Very, very good for differential diagnoses and uh, conditions. Very, very important book. Then three to four months of dedicated time. Now, this is subject to different things. If you're not working and you're not multitasking, you're just devoting your whole time, then I would say three to four months is enough. But you need to be really uh, engrossed in NPD preparation, like study every day for three to four months and forget about the rest of the world for that time period. But if you're working and you know, you're like doing multitasking, a lot of different things, then it might take six months to a year. Like it all depends. Again, it depends person to person. Some people are able to manage everything. There are several online coaching programs available that you can uh, make use of it. Uh, but again, it's money and investment. I mean, uh, you have to weigh and see if you're able to do that. But uh, I mean, it's good, right? If you want, you want to use every possible resource to pass this exam, if you are planning to come here. Breathe, it's all basics. So it's all basics. What I realized after giving NPTE is that I studied way, way too much than what was required. It's an entry level exam to practice in states. Uh, I know it's high, it's high stakes uh, exam. What by basic I mean is it's a very, like they ask critical reasoning type of concepts. So if you just mug up or 
just go and read a book you won't be able to pass this exam trust me you need to know in depth knowledge like ba at the basic level like why is this happening why so like if you have the answer of why for everything you say or every every line that you study in the book if you have the answer for why you can pass this exam but if somebody is saying why is this happening or why is not and you are like you're like i don't know then you need to think back and you're like okay maybe i need to change my strategy of studying so in this uh, slide i have provided a brief uh, layout of npte it is a multiple choice exam which means you have uh, four choices a b c and d one is uh, correct others are just a or they you know confuse you <laughs> or you need to have the concept or the basic knowledge really clear to be able to get to that uh, correct answer 250 questions in total 5 hour duration exam only 200 questions are scored so the remaining 50 that you can see here you will be wondering why have they added like 50 questions extra if they are just scoring 200 they are adding for they are adding that questions for future candidates so they are using the those questions as test questions they need to uh, see how many candidates are pass, are marking the correct answer in those test questions if those test question like majority i mean is you know uh, marking the select correct answer then that that makes them aware that the question was good it was worded correctly the options were clear there was no confusion so they can use those 50 questions in the future exams but not that one uh scored out of 800 marks you need to get 600 out of 800 to pass this exam and that is 75 percent score nobody will ask you how what's your score after you pass this exam you just need to pass so even a 600 is a pass 700 and 800 all of that is pass don't worry about the score they doesn't define you score doesn't define you your license define you once you have license means you're good total attempts in a lifetime are six they have reduced it earlier they had like unlimited attempts but again <laughs> that's not justified uh, i mean there should be some criteria in uh, the way the license is provided and uh, that's how they have reduced it to six attempts in the whole lifetime it is NPT exam is offered four times in a year uh, with different dates. One is January, I think, then you have it in April, then you have it in July and uh, October. So this is how it's offered. And the fee is $485, uh, which you can convert it by multiplying, you know, what is the current dollar rate value, one US dollar to Indian currency, then multiply by that amount, and you will know what is the price for NPT exam. Um, state requirements in general so uh, okay sorry state requirements uh, as you know I already talked to you about different states uh, have different requirements so in general I have given a basic um, layout of how so what are the requirements by the states so the first is you need to submit a state licensing application form that needs to be mailed so you need to completely fill all of that your personal information like your name address telephone number email then what uh, like did you pass the npt yes or no when did you pass or bpt education so talk about your right your university name degree name date of graduation your masters it's all that you need to fill in and then sign and authorize that yes i am the person like i am Tan, tanya i'm tanya who is writing all of this so it's true so you need to sign that that is the licensing application form then you would need a credential deficiency uh, completion which i told you earlier ecr so you need all that to be completed once uh, your organization fccpt gives you a letter and say your education is substantially equivalent to the american physical therapy graduate and you have no content deficiency no credit deficiency that letter you are set that means you have completed all of your deficiencies and the fccpt will forward that information to the state you have requested to go to passing the npt exam yeah that's like the major major hurdle i would say uh, 
biggest hurdle of all of these trust me all of these i know paperwork is intense getting documents from india is not easy but that is something i mean you can request college they can take some time and get it done but passing the exam is like totally on you it's not on anyone else then you need to complete the npt score transfer so if once you pass the npt you need to transfer your score from the fsbpt website that i showed you to the state that you want to work in submission of official transcripts now this is interesting here your state also requires the official transcripts so what they do is uh, if you are you have studied in us or in canada they would accept the transcripts directly from there but if you study from india they they kind of not accept it <laughs> that's uh, what's happening these days yeah they don't accept uh, so what they have opened another route for you guys so uh, your fccpt organization saves all of your transcripts and documents so you can request fccpt to send your documents to the state but again they will charge they charge 80 dollars to do that so it yeah that's a lot of money again but again you have to do what you have to do then passing the jurisprudence exam so jam jam means jurisprudence assessment module so basically uh, this is a law exam that you, you need to pass for the state you need to work in law about physical therapy practice physical therapy assistant practice how pts are supervising uh, the pta or pt aids like all that license renewal process like everything about the state requirements for physical therapy that is the exam you need to pass and the scoring for that again you need to get 75 percent passing the toefl exam again toefl is the test of english uh, fluency or uh, language level you're like you're reading listening speaking writing your foreign language test of english is a foreign language is going to be tested uh, currently the ibd score in uh, internet based testing for michigan is 89 i'm giving it as, a, as an example here out of 120 you need to get one uh, you need to get 89 score and some states specifically ask for speaking score to be 26 out of 30 which is really high really high uh, especially if, if someone is working you know or studying in india where our first language is hindi i know we all talk in english in india too but the level that they need here for toefl speaking is really high because you have american examiners who are grading you and they are born speakers they are native speakers so uh, when we start talking it's kind of uh, different how they grade you they immediately know the difference when an indian person who's coming from india is speaking and someone who's born here so that's where people lose their marks but it's okay we can all uh, study and uh, get that done fingerprinting for security purpose so again they need to make sure you're not a criminal <laughs> they don't want a criminal going and uh, getting license and uh, treating patients right so they need to do a fbi fingerprinting thing federal bureau of investigation like you need to go to their office i went there and uh, my fingerprints were all uh, <laughs> taken to make sure i am my like i am who i'm talking about and i have no criminal history uh, so that's what they did uh, endorsement verification uh, now i know i have added this point but this will be too much at this point but i would just briefly mention it to give you a little bit idea so once you pass the npte and if you've registered for new york state license and you got your license but then you later on decide i don't want to work in new york i want to go to illinois for example you want to go to illinois state then you need to endorse your license from new york to illinois state endorsement means illinois state will ask new york state for a verification of your license basically asking them is this person really licensed in new york what is their license expiration date license number were they morally good have they committed any crime like basically all those things background checks and all uh, because another state wants to give you license but they need to verify what you did in the previous state were you good or no so that's what is called uh, endorsement verification in another state okay uh, let's go to the next one oh almost done so time for some motivation so uh, today i would just say two things um, at the end believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable the uh, person who stops you is yourself remember you and your thoughts nobody else 
and nobody can tell you what to do what to not do people can always guide you or tell you don't do this don't but it's you who needs to make the decision right it's you uh, so change starts from you if you think you can do it you can do it if you want to go on a moon you think you want to go on a moon you can go okay but if you think i don't want to i can't do this the moment you said it you've ruined it trust me okay so confidence is very important and that will lead lead you to what success as your alumni i'm saying that as in my own personal experience and the second thing is again you can see the picture self doubt so you can see how these little cartoon characters are carrying that uh, big rock which has written on it like self doubt this is what we do we overthink we overthink we like no i can't do this i can't do that no why why i mean everyone has their own potential and once you start recognizing it nothing is impossible uh so maybe if you keep that self doubt away from your head you can uh, concentrate better and achieve great heights and finally if you keep that away you can uh, go towards your goal okay so that is the end of my presentation uh if you have any questions you can ask i i know um ma'am uh, dr savita had uh, forwarded me some questions so i can answer that right now if you want um so for ecr the evaluation time that fccpt takes uh, is uh, approximately uh, sorry yeah sorry for interrupting you tanya no no that's okay uh, thank you dr tanya that was really an exemplary and elaborate explanation uh, now what i would like to take up some questions um, question uh, from the audience is what is the time period for credential evaluation for ecr okay so the time period for credential evaluation is uh, 16 weeks for ecr which is approximately 4 months mm -hmm. okay another one uh, how much time does it take to complete the evaluation give the exam and get license so uh, it's a, again it would depend um so once you get your ecr initial ecr which i told you will take 4 months they will they will definitely tell you that you have some credit deficiencies and some course deficiencies and uh, sometimes it's less sometimes it's more so it could be somewhere 3 months more that you are taking 3 4 months to complete that deficiency and uh, so you can add that 4 months 8 months and then you apply for a reevaluation which means again you are submitting your uh, course documents that you've completed so it's going to be somewhere around uh, i would say one year time 10 to 1 year by the time you appear the exam and get it like 12 14 months yeah unlike you if you are applying for new york state which is faster i told you so then you would be able to uh, get eligibility faster like 6 7 months you will be done with the exam and everything yeah uh, does bpt uh, fulfill the credits and post work requirements uh not really <laughs> for me i i did bpt so uh my i still got lot of credit deficiencies and uh, even course deficiencies uh, from all my syllabus in india so it does not fulfill completely no it does fulfill lot of credits but you need to do on top of that some more yeah will doing mpt make a difference for evaluation sorry uh, doing mpt will uh, doing mpt make a difference for evaluation so doing mpt would certainly add uh, more coursework content uh, and more credits but we can't be 100% sure that they will you know completely fulfill it because i know a lot of people who have mpt from india vpt from india and they are here still they sorry still they got their credit credits deficiencies and they are doing more coursework to be able to fulfill that criteria so yeah it doesn't unfortunately it does not we have one more question from the audience what is cwt cwt is a coursework tool that they use the fccpt organization used to uh check your all your education your bachelor's education and masters so they have their own tools how they evaluate we don't know they just mention the tool number so currently the latest tool that they are using is coursework tool 
which is more deficiencies and more credit. So you need a higher credit value to meet that. And for FCCPT, I think it's 210 credits that you need to fulfill that criteria. Mm -hmm. How to resolve the credit deficiency, if any by chance comes the way for us to meet? Yeah, so credit deficiencies uh, can be resolved uh, through taking online courses from universities and colleges in US. I'm saying US because they will, you know, they're widely accepted. So if you take it from US, uh, FCPT surely will accept it. But other countries, or if you take it from somewhere else, sometimes they don't approve it. So it's up to them if they want to accept or reject. So why do you want to take risk? So I've heard Philippines University, like their rehabilitation institute, they provide some courses and it's accepted. Otherwise, American universities like Arcadia University, Montana University, um, Augustine University, like these are some universities that provide you courses to complete that deficiency. And uh, one more question from the audience, Sanya. How to apply for NPT in Canada? To apply, so in Canada, uh, to apply for NPT, I would say um, you need to first uh, check the universities, like where you want to apply. So I did a master's in rehabilitation science, thesis-based master's, which was not an MP MPT. It was a research-based master. So mine was totally different. But for MPT, again, mostly I think they require GRE score, TOEFL scores, your, all the transcripts, your resume cover letter, your research experiences, everything. So you need to uh, check with you, the university you want to apply for and then go ahead. But GRE, I've heard they require GRE, like majority of the universities, yeah. And uh, how to apply for a transitional DPT in US? Okay, so transitional DPT, uh, so in US you have two kinds of DPT. One is entry-level DPT, another is transitional DPT. The one that I'm doing is transitional DPT, which is only completed after you have a license with certain exceptions. Certain, certain universities do allow you without license. But again, the fees is really high and uh, it's, it's another set of paperwork. So TDPT is post-professional DPT, which means you are already a licensed physical therapist in U.S., and you are doing that to increase your knowledge, to be a very good and successful clinician. But the normal DPT is entry level, which is similar to BPT in India. Okay. Dr. Tanya, what all documents are required from the institute or university in the process? And how has the college helped you in referral even during this pandemic? Okay. So uh, all documents, basically you need uh, your transcript, college uh, official transcript, your degree certificate, your all the mark sheets, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, internship completion certificate from the hospital, from the college, your curriculum hours, like all these documents are sealed in an envelope sign that's that's all what you need and sometimes what happens is fccpt sends specific forms to college so you need to make sure you tell college like you give them a call or you send an email email is the best very official and it's, it's the best way reach, reach out to them email them everything what you need you just just write that ma'am i, I uh, this morning. And please, once you receive the form, please fill it and put all the, you know, signature date and you need to uh, get it done through college. So either as a student, because I trouble my mom a lot, <laughs> but now she knows the procedure really well, I think. Nidhi ma'am and my mom, they know each other really well now. It's too much paperwork. So in this pandemic, college has been really nice. I know college was, you know, in lockdown because of the government's order, like nobody was working and everything. And I, I contacted Nidhi, ma'am, that I want to get this done. She's like, I'm not going. I'm like, ma'am, do you have stamps at home? Please do it. She's like, I'm not bringing any stamps at home. So one day she has to 
वो कॉलेज ऑफिशियली मैसेज मिश लाइक आई एम गोइंग कॉलेज मोर टाइम यू नो आई आई गेट एवरीथिंग डन सो माय मॉम वेंट राइट अवे टू गेट एवरीथिंग डन सो या इट्स हार्ड बट आई मीन कॉलेज इज रियली सपोर्टिव आई आई वुड से स्पेशली नाउ इन लास्ट वन और टू इयर्स द सपोर्ट इज इमेंस इमेंस या Uh, it was such a pleasure having you as an esteemed resource person here on behalf of BCIP i would like to thank you so much for enlightening all of us and making us more knowledgeable those who have still not subscribed to our official youtube channel subscribe it today for more informative lectures study material and many more things thank you all viewers thank you so much dr tanya yeah thank you to all of you for being here and giving me this chance it really feels wonderful to talk to the Uh, like all of you like the teachers and uh, professors and students so really glad i am i'm hoping this will help to fulfill some of the students dreams to be a us uh, physical therapist so if you have any questions please please, please uh, feel free to contact uh, dr charu dr savita dr nidhi get in touch with them and they can forward uh, all the questions to me on my email and i will answer all of those okay thank you tanya thank you so much Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Okay, have a good night, all of you. Good night, Tanya. Good night. Okay, bye bye. Bye.